Come on, season six, let's get sick me! Yeah. Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're ranking all the seasons of RuPaul's Drag Race. Hallelujah! Oh my god! Oh my god. It looks like things just got a legendary. What if I'm the trade of the season? <gasps> For this list, we're looking at all of RuPaul's Drag Race US seasons, including All Stars, and ranking them from worst to best. We're only including completed seasons, however, so you won't see season 13 here. Also, we are issuing a spoiler alert. So what's your favorite season of Drag Race? Let us know in the comments. All right, racers, start your engines and let's get into it. Number 17. Season 1. RuPaul's Drag Race is about to get real. Can you kneel, please? In 3, 2, 1. We wouldn't have Drag Race as we know it today were it not for this season. But as the very first iteration of the show, it did face some challenges. And I don't see you out there walking children in nature. I never call You're not a loser. No. That's why you're here today. The series was understandably still finding its groove at this point, so it's missing a lot of classics like Snatch Game. And the weird filter that covered the whole season is something queens on the show joke about to this day. Not to mention the cash prize was pretty modest compared to what it is now. But despite its shortcomings, season one had a raw vulnerability introduced us to some seriously fierce queens like Bibi Zahara Benet and Ongina, and set the tone for the iconic franchise that is RuPaul's Drag Race. Because life is a celebration. Number 16, All Stars 4. The cast this season was a good one, with fan favorites like Latrice Royale and Manila Luzon participating. Oh, team Latrilla. There was no shortage of iconic queens that came to slay, and no shortage of twists either. First, in a shocking decision, Naomi Smalls eliminated Manila Luzon, one of the season's frontrunners. We can't deny it was a smart move, but it was also kind of a bummer to see Manila robbed like that. And there's more. The finale saw RuPaul announce a tie between Trinity the Tuck and Monet Exchange. Needless to say, the decision to crown two queens was a pretty controversial one among fans. For the first time in All Stars history, you are both winners, baby. And at the end of the day, All Stars 4 just didn't quite live up to its potential. Number 15, All Stars 1. <laughs> I would say Chanel likes to be on top. And Chanel said, You know me way too well, darling. <laughs> As the first season of All Stars, it was understandably the least refined in terms of format. As such, this season was certainly uniquely interesting. The queens had to compete in teams of two, so their fates were tied to each other. Starting today, you'll be competing as teams of two. OMG. <laughs> Plus, the eliminations were still done the old fashioned way. There were no lipsticks or lip syncs for your legacy yet, which is a shame. Of course, this season had a lot of great moments and amazing queens. But the decision to pair them up was met with anger and skepticism by some who felt that it was far from fair. Simply put, this season is a good time, though it lacks a lot of what sets All Stars apart. Number 14, Season 10. There are two words that perfectly describe this season. Miss Vanjie. Miss Vanjie. Miss Vanjie. Miss Vanjie. Granted, that was a moment from the end of the first episode, but it gave us one of the most memed moments in Drag Race history. No shame. <laughs> Facts are back. Yeah. Facts are back. But there was more to this season than just Vanessa Vanjie Mateo's unforgettable exit. I saw it and I was like, oh, brown cow, stunning. <laughs> the Vixen provided viewers with a hefty dose of drama, Eureka got to redeem herself after her unfortunate season nine exit, and Aquaria snatched the crown by proving she had substance as well as style. Melania. Melania, Melania, sorry. It's all right, but I have no worries. <laughs> all in all, while season 10 isn't exactly the show's most memorable, it certainly is enjoyable to watch. Number 13, Season 7. Known as one of the show's more lackluster seasons, 
Season 7 had a mix of highs and lows. So there's something on my face. The cast was full of powerhouses like Trixie Mattel, Ginger Minj, Pearl, Katya, and Kennedy Davenport, just to name a few. And Snatch Game was a highlight. Where in England are you from, Adele? My house. <laughs> Yet, for some reason, the group just didn't produce as much synergy or as many rewatchable moments as casts from other seasons did. And to this day, Violet Chachki being crowned America's next drag superstar remains one of the show's more questionable outcomes. Come through! <laughs> Overall, it was just a bit boring, which is both shocking and disappointing considering the amount of star power that was present. Number 12, Season 11. Action. Uplands, you own everything. Cut, 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 cut. This season saw the return of Vanessa Vangie Mateo and the birth of a relationship between her and Brooklyn Heights. Hi, Poppy. Hi. How are you? Good. Needless to say, anytime Miss Vanjie's on our screens, we're happy. There's one thing about Vanessa, when that bitch opens her mouth, it's an amazing thing to watch. We also have to give a shout out to the Diva Talk Show Challenge. The Britney team delivered, but it was honestly a bit cringeworthy watching the Mariah Carey team mess up so royally. Welcome, my little lamb. As for lip syncs, Evie Oddly and Brooklyn Heights delivered a showdown to remember when they performed Demi Lovato's Sorry Not Sorry. The best part of this season was witnessing Evie's rise. Her win solidified the fact that being different is a good thing, and we're here for it. Follow your oddities and fly your freak frag! <laughs> Number 11, All Stars 5. I would sensually walk to the thermostat <laughs> and turn up the thermostat to a sensible 74. This season, the lip sync for your legacy was done a little differently. RuPaul named one all-star each week instead of two, and that queen went up against a past lip sync assassin. Ru, feel yourself! When the all-star triumphed, they chose who to send home. But when the assassin emerged victorious, the group's votes decided who was sent packing. This twist certainly made things more interesting. Look no further than the drama between India Farah and Alexis Mateo. Well, queens like Mayhem Miller got roped in too. Well, all I said is who I voted for, so why is it being brought up like I did something shady? Plus, queens like Jujubee and Ms. Cracker kept things interesting. I've been telling these girls from the beginning, like, let's just be nice to each other tonight, but I guess I'm like Shea Coulee's music because nobody listens to me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> But at the end of the day, All Stars 5 was Shea Coulee's redemption season. She was vulnerable and honest as she processed her season 9 loss, which gave the season a lot of heart. For the longest time, I thought that therapy was just for white people with money. And I was wrong. It is also for black people with money. <laughs> Number 10, Season 8. This season belonged to Bob the Drag Queen. But back to the mad Ed Head, yeah, yeah. I just wrote corn. Now one of the franchise's most instantly recognizable faces, Bob was poised to win from the very beginning with her consistently strong performances. Well, then why did I waste my time putting on this? Oh, there's more. <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot of suspense when the time came for the grand finale. In other words, there was no underdog rising to the top storyline this season. Take whatever you love about yourself and walk into the world perfect! But we can move past that because of what a joy it was watching Bob and other amazing queens like Naomi Smalls, Kim Chi, and the late Chi Chi Devane do their thing this season. Les le bon temps roulet. What'd she say? However, with only 10 episodes, season 8 was here for a good time. Not a long time. So, what are you gonna do when you run out of jokes? I know what I'll do. Walk to the club, purse first. Bam! <laughs> Walk to the club, purse first. Bam! <laughs> New York, baby! Number nine, season 12. Hi, Maria. What's up, bitch? Oh! <laughs> a lot of charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talent emerged from this season of Drag Race. Widow Von Duke? Yes, bitch, I might be. From Jackie Cox's Persianality to Gigi Good's impeccable style to winner Jada Essence Hall's flair, the queens were fun and endearing to watch. Look over there! Where? 
Not to mention the Rusical was probably one of the best ever in the history of the show. I wanna rule the world. But because of the coronavirus pandemic, the finale had to go virtual. Luckily though, they found a way to make it work. Overall, season 12 provided viewers with heart, laughs, and great performances. Number 8. All Stars 3 This season of All Stars was filled with powerhouses, from Shangela to Trixie Mattel to Ben de la Creme. And season one winner Bibi Zahara Benet got to return because, let's face it, she didn't get the same recognition or money as the other winners. Bibi had to deal with that season one filter, remember that? It was definitely an entertaining season to watch, with multiple moments that made us audibly gasp. Chief among these is Ben de la Creme voting herself off the show. I'm going home. What? And while that was certainly a shocking moment, it wasn't the season's most disappointing. That honor goes to when the eliminated queens returned. I feel like Ned Stark of Game of Thrones when he was walking up to that guillotine, bitch. They threw Shangela under the bus, thus robbing her of the chance to win despite her consistently amazing performances. This season delivered on all fronts. Hey, oh! wow! <laughs> Number seven. Season 3. Everybody down! <laughs> I'm just swaying my hips and smiling and showing off my purse and having a gale time. This is where fans got their first look at Manila Luzon, fell in love with Raja's impeccable taste, and saw Shangela come back for a second chance at the crown. Hallelujah! Oh of course, it's also the season that gave us the now infamous line. Drag is not a contact sport. After Mimi I'm First got a little too up close and personal during a lip sync for your life. But the one thing that really sets this season apart from the others was the two competing cliques, the Heathers versus the Boogers. Carmen, Manila, Delta, and myself have decided to call each other Heather. It was definitely something to watch them go head to head. From the drama to the abundance of crafty challenges, there was no shortage of captivating moments this season. For the grand finale, welcome Raja. All that jazz, and Ooh. then some. Oh. Number six, season two. While the production value was still a little low, it was only the second season after all, you could tell after this season that the show wasn't going anywhere anytime soon. With icons like Jujube, Raven, and Morgan McMichaels gracing our screens, there was never a dull moment. Legendary you think you are. Legendary looks like leg and dairy. Oh! Season 2 had its fair share of riveting catfights, with the drama between Tyra and the other girls taking center stage. Um, I don't think that you're seeing that Tyra is a complete bitch. Plus, this is when we first got our taste of Snatch Game. After watching Tatiana's unforgettable Britney impression, we were hooked forever. What's your favorite game? Oh, goodness. I like playing Hide the Cucumber. I love that one. Oh, yes. To put it simply, season two cemented Drag Race as a television staple. So it's definitely one for the books. Number five, season nine. Don't think y'all could do this without me, Black China up in here. <laughs> The spotlight was on the lip syncs this year. They gave us some of the most re-watchable moments not only of the season, but of the show in its entirety. First, there was Valentina's masked Ariana Grande lip sync debacle that we are still not over. Take that thing off of your mouth. I'd like to keep it on, please. Then, this season introduced the lip sync for the crown format that is now standard for the show. And it certainly didn't disappoint. Sasha Velour's amazing floral reveal has gone down in the Drag Race history books as one of the most memorable performances ever. This season also produced one of the show's strongest casts, with many of the queens featured now finding themselves among the best-known faces from the show. My name is Shea Coulee, and I didn't come to play, I came to play. Number 4, Season 5. We saw a true comedy queen be crowned America's next drag superstar when Jinx Monsoon won this season. Get ready, bitches, because it's Monsoon season! <laughs> 
there was also plenty of drama, with a number of rivalries between queens taking shape. Notably, Season 5 introduced us to Alyssa Edwards and Coco Montrese, and we got to feast on all the drama between them. I'm not joking, bitch! We also saw the formation of the oft-maligned Relaskatox Alliance. Jinx winning was definitely a nice victory, since many felt like she was belittled by the other girls throughout the season despite constantly showcasing her talents. Can I get named it? I feel the Jinx is the weakest because all these girls with the gimmicks are getting by, and it's kind of pissing me off. All the competitors this season were heavy hitters, and many, like Alaska, got a second chance during All Stars. There is no doubt that Season 5 had a great mix of drama and laughs. Number 3, Season 4. Get those nuts away from my face! This season stands out for a few reasons. We got to meet the incomparable Latrice Royale, who is now one of the franchise's most beloved faces. Latrice Royale is large and in charge. Chunky yet funky. Wow. Bold and beautiful baby. Plus, it marked Chad Michaels' entrance onto the drag race scene. As for drama, fans were treated to an unforgettable showdown between Sharon Needles, self-proclaimed weirdo, and Fifi O'Hara, pageant queen. Tired ass showgirl. F you. Showgirl, at least I am a showgirl, bitch. Go back to Party City where you belong. And who could ever forget the intense moment where Willem got disqualified? Your actions have consequences. Season 4 didn't disappoint in terms of lip syncs either, with Dita Ritz delivering an unforgettable performance to This Will Be an Everlasting Love. Above all, Sharon Needle's victory proved that you can be a drag queen that goes against the grain and still take home the crown, which was a win for outcasts everywhere. Happy Halloween, everybody! <laughs> Number 2, Season 6. Come on, season six, let's get sick, me! Yeah. Yeah. This was the year we were graced with the presence of drag race greats like the hilarious winner Bianca Del Rio, Baloney. the beautiful Courtney Act, the iconic Ben De La Creme, and the one and only Adore Delano, just to name a few. My name is Ben De La Creme, and I'm 31 years old. Ben De La Creme. Yes. De La for short, oh. De for shorter, Miss Creme if you're nasty. Uh Party. It's no wonder it's one of the show's most beloved seasons. The contestants were all engaging and genuine, which made you want to root for them. Plus, the challenges were exciting to watch. Drink for me! Don't do it! Don't do it! Drink for me! Don't lose it! Don't lose it! From Shade the Rusical to Oh No She Better Don't to the wedding makeovers, they were entertaining and well balanced in terms of style and themes. There is no doubt that season six of Drag Race really set the bar for all those that came after it. Not today, Satan. Not today. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, All Stars 2. You think you're clever, don't you? <laughs> This is when All Stars really found itself, with the teams being replaced with a format where the contestants eliminated one another each week. Because it was the first season to do this, there was no real roadmap for the queens to follow when it came to strategy. That is what made it so captivating to watch. If y'all send me home, it was rigged. <laughs> Riga Morris, girl! It was Riga Morris, girl! Mor who's Morris? We also saw the return of Alaska Talks, but this time, Alaska really set herself apart and shone so bright she won the crown. Plus, from the amazing Shut Up and Drive lip sync to the glorious Reggie Rochu performance, All Stars 2 gave us an abundance of entertainment. But your dad just calls me Katya. From the challenges to the runways to the relationships between the queens, there were simply no misses this season. The same parts. The same parts. I don't get why season seven gets such a bad rap, obviously. But I don't think anyone can argue with All Stars 2 as the number one drag race season of all time. I mean, it had everything. It had drama. It had redemption. It had the iconic line, I'm Roxy Andrews and I'm here to make it clear. 
Ah, anyway, let us know in the comments if there are any seasons of Drag Race that you think are unfairly criticized. Or come tell me on Twitter or Instagram at Rebecca Brayton or on my YouTube channel. See ya.